Hello, 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 and a massive hello to everybody. Hope everybody's having a great weekend wherever you may be, whatever you may be doing. This is 50 Pips rocking and rolling here, 11th of June, 2017. No trade calls, no recommendations. Everybody sponsors for their own stuff. We're here for educational purposes only. So what's happening going into the new week? So hopefully it should be fairly interesting. As always, we have plenty of uh, geopolitical risk in the Middle East. Uh, we have North Korea that could be on the wires. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff, but and it, as if um, that wasn't enough, you know, Comey, Trump, whatever. We've got a bunch of central banks on deck this week, so uh, plenty of action. So again, the fairly steady stream of data this week, even on, you know, sorry, Tuesday, we've got CPIs out of the UK, we got PPIs, we got industrial production out of uh, China on Wednesday. Uh, you know, we got the core CPIs out of the US, core retail sales. But, you know, the big thing is Wednesday, we've got the FOMC, right? Um, with the statement rate and the press conference. Then we have GDP out of New Zealand. But on Thursday, we've also got the SMB, right? Which is going to be fairly interesting. We've got the BOE, which is be very interesting seeing what's happening in the UK. We've got the usual weekly job jobs numbers and then we have basically the boj on friday which could be a very very big mover so plenty of stuff to look forward to so where did we leave off right coming into this week and heading into all this uh, central bank week well again we had a decent pullback on the nasdaq you know very aggressive action across the board i think most people were talking about basically what happened on Amazon, right? A lot of people talk about a flash crash on Amazon, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We're not huge fans of the using the term flash cash, but you know, we're down about eight, eight and a half percent at one specific time. You know, probably some some large order stop in the system just got clipped, right? But again, fairly interesting moves. You have to pay attention when these things happen, right? So in terms of NASDAQ. Let's go back at the NASDAQ here, try to take a bit more of a general perspective. The big question is, how does this resolve, right? Is this just uptrend is completely in play? You know, these moving averages are coming up and we're just going to continue rotating higher, right? The climb is going to continue or is this the start of something different now? The bears are probably going to say, this is it. This was the kiss of death. It's topped any kind of rally. This is a sell. We've got a much bigger correction coming into play. And the longs will probably say, you know, hey, this is nothing, not even a flesh wound. Everything's in trend. This is just a dip. Even if we correct a little bit lower, plenty of buying opportunities for this to correct much higher. Okay. The way we look at it is, we have no idea, right? <laughs> we don't have a crystal ball. We don't want to have a bias. So even though we're saying that um, corrections are healthy, we've been talking about the fact that these kind of markets, when you've got these climbs higher on lower volume, tend to give it back in aggressive fashions. You tend to see what we say, you know, taking the steps up and the and the escalator down. You see here basically what happened in one day you gave back basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. What's well, probably about thirty days, right? Twenty, thirty days in one day. This is what it means, right? But all we know, shorter term, you know, as humble students of the market, is that here it would be fairly rare for price not to print a new low when we open on Monday. Having said that, you know, we're still looking at our levels. So as long as we don't get a daily close below this previous resistance, that should act as support. As long as we don't get a daily close above, uh, below this 50 DMA, we'd expect any kind of action here and close above to be corrective. Break below on the day, close below, then very heavy. We're looking at our next level into the 100, into this previous resistance that should act as support. So we're just going to try and be very unbiased, very neutral and say, you know, we've got resistance, support, support going into the week. Any closes above, 
bounces unless we take out those highs probably shorting opportunities break below stay below heavy any rally will probably be a sell for continuation lower so again that's the way we're going to look at it we're going to keep a very open mind now a lot of people will probably be talking about this is just a little bit rotation out of uh, uh, out of tech uh, and you can see i mean effectively if you look at other things like xlf for example if you look at the financials how did the financials react on Friday? Well, look at that, you know. If you're looking at what happened on Amazon and NASDAQ saying it's the end of the world, where it ain't the end of the world for financials, right? So it does look like, uh, you know, we're getting these uh, financials getting a bit, catching a little bit of a bid. If you look at RUT, right, which has historically been this week's being, the, this month's being the one that's been weaker. Look at that, you know pressing coming in here so you it does look like you know it's profit taking move out of of tech coming into these small caps coming into financial so we'll have to wait and see i think you have to keep an open mind um the only thing we would say as we said on twitter and we did get a little bit of a sell-off later on in the dow and the es is that as long as the sell-off on the nasdaq is not really really aggressive then this could indeed just be a little bit of rotation and, so, and sooner or later, especially if we don't close below here, you'll see these NASDAQ stocks tr start to catch a little bit of bid again. But if early in the week we break below here, we close below and you start to get, you know, back to back minus three, minus four, minus, minus five percent days in the NASDAQ, then we would be selling all the other indices very, very aggressively too right as long as the nasdaq recuperates stays uh sideways then you'd want to be careful being too aggressive because it does look like a lot of strength coming into financials and 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 the um the small caps but again nasdaq is probably going to be the the key look at tesla look at apple look at amazon look at um uh, facebook etc if those keep on having down three four five percent days then it's probably the start of something bigger if everything starts to stabilize here then you know all you, you you can say is chop here but there's a possibility that this would just a little dip and we're going higher but any failures you know we'll still be more than happy to sell just to be clear we're not buyers okay uh what's going on with the um dxy so interesting action again there's potential for a lot of moves this week because not only the fed we got the boj right so as if indeed they've been talking about they're going to start um you know scaling back a little bit uh, you know the the yen could start to uh you know and, and depending what comes out of uh um, of Yellen, you know, the yen could really start uh, to catch a, a strong bid. And if Yellen is not as gung ho as everybody expects her, to, expects her to be, you know, there could still be a lot more weakness in the dollar. So here the, the, the rallies continue to be very shallow. As long as we don't get a day close below the 9680s, you'd have to assume that the path of least resistance is to try and grind back up into the 9850s. If that doesn't happen, if it continues to hold heavy, then the market is telling you something. And most likely what it's telling you is that it needs to come and take care of that unresolved business in these 9580s before we consider any kind of healthy retracement. Any kind of healthy retracement will likely meet a lot of resistance coming into this zone. But again, we discussed this in detail in uh, the other videos. Now, uh, yen, as we said, particularly interesting because of the BOJ2 here. Again, our view is that this was a false break, that we're holding heavy. And as long as we don't start to close back above all these moving averages, there is... Uh, room for this to extend much lower and the boj could make or break this trade on friday so we'll have to see what happens again so far it looks like it the pressure is still on it's trying to move lower it just doesn't have to get back above here it's all going to be you know boj and fomc you know on the fomc even if we get a little rally if it can't because you know maybe everything's priced in if it can't get above there then we think there's a good chance we see move back lower into the um the BOJ. Now, as we said, we were discussing this for a long time. Structurally, we are bullish Euro GPB. We're bearish uh, cable. Um, as we said, the break up here was a very nice, uh, nice move. We, as long as we didn't get a day cl close below here, we'd expect this to continue to go higher. Clip stops above here. 
and clip stops above here almost done not yet so we still think there's some unresolved business above here we still think those need to take get taken out but ultimately no change in our call is for a move back to take out these highs and again cable we've seen so much action this year on all these big event risks you know all these elections it's been moving very very nicely right so here if you remember we talked about the very interesting sell opportunities even all the way back on the on the hourlies right where the market was clearly talking to you right if you were listening the fact that we repeatedly couldn't rally here every time we had these news high bam then fell you know, it was beautiful little cells to take out this lows and come back down right then what we said going into the um, election you know apart from the fact that we were structurally bearish just if you're looking about how you're going to tackle the the election risk right what happened you know the market rallied hard when the uh, uh, election was announced right so essentially starting to price in a uh, strong mandate for mrs may miss may and co mrs may rather and uh, and her whole team uh, majority strong 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 hard brexit let's go let's see so that's what the market started to price in and we were hovering here staying bid into um, the election with a nice little chance to sell it and then a little rip here which we thought was still uh, by the rumor sell the news now what happened here nothing surprising I think the most surprising thing really here is on the fact that things didn't go as panned out as the market start, started pricing in I think if anything you'd have to be surprised as why didn't we take out this low right we took out the upside of this range then we didn't get what market was expecting why haven't we taken out this lower end of the range right that's the big question so right here we'll have to see what happens but we still look at this as sell on rallies for uh, first of all we need to take out we've got unresolved business to take out here this day is key we clip the upside we need to clear the downside then we'll have to see how it behaves right if we can continue lower but unless something changes pronto we still think that 2150 is in play possibly even lower so this hasn't changed but very nice very technical both on um, one hour uh, or intraday uh, time frames that is also in the bigger picture in terms of trying to frame this a little bit um, uh, just in terms of a common sense on how price action is, is reacting um, then what else uh, I just don't want to ramble too long I still lose track of time um, <laughs> gold what's happening on gold so no big change for us on gold our base case was still that we're, we, we, we need to we've got unresolved business we need to clear, take care at 1340s uh, right as bullish as we have been on gold if you remember what we said as you're hovering here right as the market had priced in all kinds of event, event risk possible uh, negative surprise etc the only thing you can do at highs you can't come into this after you chickened out trying to buy buy the dip here and try to get long at highs for this last part of the move where the meat you know 60 70 percent of the move is already done if anything what you have to play here is you have to switch take some profit on the longs or play inter you know shorter term tactically you need to get short for a healthy move back to at least into this trend line trying to find support into all these moving averages and this is your chance to get long again but not at highs you're not going to buy highs before we've broken here buy into accelerate when you're about to hit a brick wall right so here this is very interesting as we're going into this week with all these central banks you know this could clearly press lower our base case is going to be day close below this bulk of these moving averages then no go for gold we're looking for this to come right back down into this 50 back all the way into the you know 1220s 1210s whatever you want to call it as long as we don't get a day close back below especially if we get day closes back above we're still in play for unresolved business at 1300s and ultimately all the way back up into 1340s okay and uh, let's do last but not least I'm worried we might have gone a bit long on this one is a crude no change in crude I think as we said right again by the rumor sell the news nice little selling opportunity those highs uh, and we said all things being equal it would be healthy for this to bounce but if you see what's going on in the Middle East Qatar Iran whatever and it's not bouncing the markets telling you something so you know when crude can't rally 
on geopolitical um, uncertainty in the Middle East when you've got Iran's telling Saudi Arabia they're going to destroy them, blah, blah, blah. You're getting all these uh, um, tensions heating up and it's not rallying. You really have to ask yourself questions. So there's always a possibility that this starts to pick up a bit and rally on some kind of geopolitical concern. But I think the thing, the fact that it hasn't at all, you really need to ask yourself, right? So we still think no change. We got unresolved business at these lows. Any rally, unless it's on a big change in terms of geopolitical or something, some big data, we still think rallies are still going to be sales. And we just think we've got unresolved business much further down. Okay, so I hope I wasn't rambling too much. I wish everybody an awesome weekend wherever you may be, whatever you may be doing. As always, thank you so much for the banter on Twitter. Thank you for the comments on the blog. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for everything. Uh, stay safe out there. Have an awesome one and talk to you guys soon. Bye bye.